Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is going to be my first video on the Advent of Code 2019. Uh, I'm going to be doing all the exercises in Erlang. It is currently a brisk minus 20 degrees Celsius morning in Quebec. Uh, it is still dark outside, and this is actually the 2nd of December, because I thought the 1st of December was going to be today, but I'm not that good at keeping track of time. So I'm going to do everything for uh, this year's Advent of Code with some bad ad hoc unedited video because I'm not really equipped for that stuff. All I've got is a little predefined area uh, pause recording button, this headset I'm speaking into, and I'm going to be using this terminal, I'm going to make something extremely minimalist in there. Usually I'm more of a fan of using uh, text in order to have the content more accessible and whatnot, uh, but in case of uh, the advent of code, I think that the interesting stuff is not necessarily um, the solution itself, it's how you get there. And so this year I'm going to be trying to do that and essentially show more of the mistakes that I'm making for all of that stuff. Uh, the advent of code is pretty interesting from the point of view that a lot of the problems assume that you have mutable memory for the stuff that you do. Uh, and visibly, Erlang does not really have that, so a lot of the problems in there I'm likely going to be um, droning and unhappy about working on, but that's what I'm going to do. So let's get started for day one. Uh, and as I said, everything I have is only a terminal, so um, I'm going to be really using all that stuff I have here. I've taken a bit of time ahead of everything to set up a few functions. Um, one of the great things about the event of code is that it doesn't ship in production, so I'm allowed to do stupid stuff like running regular code, but if I want to actually measure it, call it race, instead of having something good in there, I'm not going to write any tests, because frankly, who's got the time? And I'm expecting all the modules to have a bit of this format. I'm going to be running stuff in the shell, and I'm using a text browser, W3M, just because let's do everything in a terminal. So let's start with a day one problem. I have not read what it is at this point, so I'm going to be discovering this as we go. Uh, the tyranny of the rocket equation. All right, 50 stars, those are the starting information that you get every year. Solve puzzles. Okay, so here is the stuff that we need. I'm just going to copy paste all of that directly. And get to work on the first definition of the problem. Ooh, auto indentation is working great. This is not going to be annoying at all. All right. So, uh, yeah, if you have never done the advent of code, every day is defined, it is split in two parts. You only get access to the second part once you pass the first one. Um, so what we've got here is fuel requirements for a spacecraft. So uh, divide by three, round down, and then subtract two, divide by three, round down, and divide by three, blah, blah, blah. And so yeah, the formula is written here at the top. Specifically to find a fuel required for a module, take its mass, divide by three, round down, subtract by two. Uh, to find it, individually calculate the needs for the mass of each module, then add together all the fuel values. So we need to account for all of these. Uh, the puzzle input is written here, and here is what we have. Actually, the first good question here is going to be, how do I even get the link to that thing to double you get it? Uh, this is going to be interesting. Oh, actually... Here we go. I'm not sure I actually have access to that through a terminal. Let's see what we have with this. Yeah, I don't have access to the request. That's not going to be fantastic. So I'm going to have access to a browser, copy paste that, and get back to you. All right, so I achieved it a bit, made a private directory, and uh, made it anyway. Just. The input format is strictly just integers, a hundred of them. And of that, you can brute force something, uh, but the thing is that obviously we don't want to brute force all of the things. So let's get going. I'm going to actually use 
this code here and make something to read the files a bit more easily. Welcome to general garbage space for the tilt functions that nobody loves. This is where it's going to go. And uh, I'm going to export it with, uh, let's just call it input. And I'm going to put the name in there. Input and it's going to be, uh, yeah, straight up the day. And okay, code private directory for this is the advent application. And here I'm going to. I think this is the name. Not having access to all the documentation and terminal is going to make this a bit harder, but that's fine. Uh, so this is going to be the junction of the prime name and then I'm just going to be using the day directly. I'm going to be getting binary input. For, hey, this is a bit easier when we store that stuff. And uh, I'm going to be using a list because it makes it a bit easier from experience to handle all of that stuff after the fact. So this should be working. I'm going to be using rebar tree shell just to work with all of that stuff. So this should be advent input and I'm going to be using the first day part one input of it. And there we go. We've got the basic stuff going. All right, so let's get started with this. Uh, I'm going to make the first function, which is going to be just uh, fuel cost of a given value, I'm going to assume it's an integer. And what we were asked to do, if I go to, uh, oh. yeah, sure. Okay, if we're going there, it's going to be required to take its mass, divide by three, round down and subtract. All right, if I recall, the mat round function is a thing that exists. Yeah, it exists, I think, because if I try something like that, oh god. Uh, let's 3.5. Okay, math round doesn't exist. So we've got, it's just, I've got a great memory of all the things, but it's round down, right? So it should be a floor function, not a rounding up. So that's going to be the trunk function anyway. So I'm going to truncate the value of, I've already forgotten, I've got great memory, divide by three, round down, subtract by two. So, all right, so uh, divide by three, round down, and then subtract two. Was that correct? Yeah. Okay. And so we had a few good examples in there. Of course, it's unused. So advent input p1. That's going to be every problem's first step is parsing all of the entries. And so for this, our format, if you look there, it's all uh, integers with line breaks. So I'm going to be using the functions from string module. Uh, I guess my help function hook is not in place. I'm going to fix that for another day. Um, it should be using Unicode from memory, the string lexemes function. And the string lexemes function takes some values in there and then you just give it a list of all the characters that you want to split with. Uh, and so that should be, for example, white space like this for this one, and it's going to break them down. So I'm going to use that one with the string input, the, the string input of the um, problem for today. And I'm going to break them down by line breaks. And so here, I'm going to be getting what is essentially a list of string integers, which I can just turn to integers by calling on each of them. Um, list to integer on the string value in a list comprehension. And so that should be giving me the input for each one of all I need in here. And I can get what should be the sum of all of these 
a bit earlier. I'm going to test that my base function works. Actually, no, let's do it cowboy style. I don't have to be reasonable. This is the advent of code. Um, and so I'm just going to make the entire thing and assume that it's going to be right. So let's sum all the integers and assume that this is what we need. And if I'm wrong, then we can fix it for the time being. It's not a big, oh yeah, I should apply the field function to each one of them. And I could do it all in the same list comprehension to be extremely efficient and then do it in a fold function, but there's only a hundred values in there. So I assume it's going to be kind of simple to do. So advent and let's run for first day. Oh yeah. Let me recompile everything. And let's see if this is the right value for what we need for all of them. Let's put the answer in a text box, copy paste and submit. Okay, I've got one star and so that means that it's worked. Uh, continue to part two. So what is it now? Usually part one is easy, lets you get the brute force going and then you need to do something fancier in the second part. Uh, let's see what we get for that one. Uh, okay, so I need to consider the mass of the fuel itself and what I do. So take its mass, divide by 30, round two and subtract two. However, the fuel also requires fuel, so the fuel requires fuel and so on. Any mass that we require in a gated fuel should instead be treated as it requires zero fuel. The remaining mass, if any, is instead handled by wishing really hard, which has no mass outside of the scope of this calculation. Okay. For each module mass, calculate its fuel and add it to the total. And treat the fuel amount that you just calculated as the input mass and repeat the process until a fuel requirement is zero or negative. All right. So this is more or less an iterative process, and it's great because I don't have to rewrite what I have done so far, aside from getting uh, a new input for these, I believe. Or is it still the same input? What is the requirement? You can still get... Okay, the input hasn't changed. So let's start going with that. But let's read it through, because I do have this tendency of figuring out... Oh, yeah. Uh, I understand it, let's just work on it, but I actually have not read properly through all the requirements and then you find out that, well, I find out that I've worked on the wrong thing for a while. So <clears throat> instead I'm going to read through this more carefully and make sure that I understand everything. Uh, no free fuel because blah, 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 it's still zero. We'll round it down. First module. All right. Yeah, that's the iteration I thought we would have. Um, I'm going to create a new window and I'm just going to copy this into... That way I can keep all the structure super clear for that. I'm going to start part two by reusing what I had in part one, but I'm going to increment this value. Let's move that stuff into a private function space. And so now I have all the integers, uh, but I need to calculate, uh, and actually, actually this is the fuel requirements for all the modules. So fuel for modules. Now I need to have the fuel for fuel itself. Oops. And so I'm going to be making a kind of a iterative function. So fuel cost is going to be the fuel itself. and what I'm going to have to add up in here is going to be the fuel costs plus the sum of all the cost of my module in there. So the fuel cost is in here. And what I'm going to calculate now is the fuel cost. Now this is going to be a simple recursive function. Um, and actually, I'm going to drop the negative values of fuel cost. I'm not doing this effectively. And the reason why I just did this, let me walk through what I just talked about, is that every recursive function I write in Erlang starts with the same thing, which is a base case. In this case, it's going to be an empty list, which means that I have zero fuel cost and I know my computation is done. And in order to do that, it means that if I hide this base case of the empty list, 
I need to assume that the first step is going to always have um, the right list done because each list I have at this point is going to have its, you know, this is going to be the fuel cost of one unit. And I have the head and the tail of the list and I would want to add all of the values. But to be able to iterate safely, I don't want this value to be negative each time I do it. So I'm going to assume that I get an empty list here, that my iteration for that one, for example, would be um, a new list. But if I want this new list to eventually be empty, I need to be able to do my drop negative value in this one here. And so I have to assume that the first input for fuel cost is filtered. Not that I think of it though, it's kind of, um, it's not going to be ideal. So I'm going to do this a bit differently. Let me reward that. And it's not, I, I don't have a super strict plan every time I do my things, but let's do it this way anyway. So now I've got all my fuels in there. And what I'm going to do for that one is a list comprehension. I want to have the fuel cost of each of my fuel values in there. So fuel cost of this is still going to be uh, the list to integer. Uh, no, it's it's already integer. It's going to be the fuel value of an integer in a list that I have in here. However, the thing that I want to do now is filter out all the values that are negative before I count the cost. So I'm going to take the cost. I drop more content than I intended. So I should have in the list a bunch of integers. And the thing I'm going to do here is a little cheat and I'm going to use it a whole lot uh, with the list comprehensions. The list comprehension takes one element in each one of them and just gives me the raw element. And the thing I want to have here is the cost. But to be able to get the cost and only the cost in the iteration and be able to filter, I'm going to put it into a one element list. And that lets me have only the cost. And then it makes it really, really easy to have a filter. Like I only care if the cost is greater than zero. And now I have all of my costs for that one. That's a quick one in here. And so by dropping all the values that are greater or lower than zero, I can get something that kind of makes sense. So my total cost for that iteration is going to be the sum of all my fuel values. And I am going to recursively look into the fuel cost of this new fuel list. And so it's going to recursively go through all of them if I did it right. I'm going to get, oh, yeah. What is it? Ints isn't bound. Yeah, because I renamed it to fuel like a champ. Jesus, I'm great with this keyboard. All right. Yeah, there is no graciousness in the results that I'm going to present in these things, right? Uh, it, it's one of the things when writing a blog post or making a presentation is that everything can be made clean and proper. But frankly, it's garbage the entire way through. It just looks good because you see the final result from time to time. So let's recompile this thing and see how it goes. That's a lot more costly fuel and there's wishing in there. So let's see if that's the right result and submit it. And oh, I failed my answer. All right, so we're gonna do some little debugging now um, and figure out what I did wrong because I was very confident that this was fine. Let's go. Oh, wait. Yep. So I'm going to export a few functions in here. Um, actually, I just want to change the input for that one single for the fuel cost. Okay. I'm going to export all of it, but I don't want the compiler to warn me about that. So no warn. Export. I'm going to go play with the shell a bit. Yeah, there's a warning for the warning, but I don't care. All right, so day zero one, and I am going to be interested in the fuel cost of. Let's start with a trickier one. All right, a hundred thousand seven fifty six is going to give me this value. So thirty eight fifty three. That's kind of good. 
And so my next function is going to be the fuel cost itself of these. Um, oh, actually, yeah, I don't need to do it on a list like that. Not at all. I just need to do the fuel costs directly. The fuel cost of the fuel itself. So it's just fuel. Flow the fuel cost of the fuel. Only thing I have is an integer. I don't need to do any iteration whatsoever on this. When it's greater than zero, yes, I have read this in a terrible way. And so, okay. Uh, and this view is blah plus the sum plus the sum plus the sum plus the sum. Oh, wait. They only want the mass of the extra fuel. The sum of the fuel requirements for the modules went and all sorting. Okay, now that was calculated properly. So I'm going to rewrite the fuel cost function here and um, chill. So I have this fuel cost and the fuel cost of 33583 should be 1192. So I have the right logic. I just didn't need to apply it to the list. The fuel of this integer, so that's going to be uh, the, the new cost. Fuel is written funny. I'm not abused you. Is it really supposed to be written F U E L? Yeah, that's a funny word. All right. This is going to be new cost plus the fuel cost of the new cost itself. And now it's recursive. And if we get something that's smaller than zero, then we just return zero. Got. All right. Now let's try this again. I recompile in the shell. I don't care for this. Really? Well, that is kind of interesting. What did I mess with here? Oh, am I dividing by zero already? Oh yeah, I'm already dividing by zero. This is no, I'm not dividing by zero, I'm dividing by three. Okay. So the error is on line. What line is it? Line 24, I'm doing this. Oh god, yes, of course, this is not a sum. Okay. I killed this part here. That was kind of essential to this thing working. So let's call it input. Input is this. Trying to go to fa too fast beats. I'm breaking stuff. All right, now let's recompile. Let's run it. And this is a different result from what I had a while ago. I guess it started with a five. And let's submit this one. Not the right answer, you guessed. Four and nine, three, four and nine. Yeah, that's what I guess indeed. Jesus. This is supposed to be easy as day, and I'm tanking hard on that one already this morning. This is because it's too cold and too early. Let's use this as an excuse. So, that was the initial mass that I expected for this. So, uh, no, that's the zero one, and I'm interested in the fuel cost this and that gives me you know, 3, 4 to 6. Oh. Oh, I get it. I do get it in here. Right. So this here, I'm off two values in here, and that's because my minus or smaller than zero, val greater than zero value does not take account of that one. 
And so here I might get negative numbers. So I'm just going to use the max value between zero and that one. And that should account for all the little issues that I was having. So if I do that one, now I get the right value. Uh, and if I run the first problem, I should have fixed. God, I need a space there. I should have fixed this little thing. And if we want to see how fast it is, it takes zero milliseconds to calculate that thing. Of course, all the hard work is done before. It's not really hard work. It's just annoying work. N what? Uh, have I still guessed the same? I still guessed the same goddamn thing. God. But I get the right short problem there. Okay, so when I run no, the one there, I run the 50344. That would. No, I still had the wrong result. That's 53. 346. 50. Yeah, I had the right one. How do I calculate these? So I had the sum of my fuel plus the fuel cost on that one. Are they not wanting the base fuel cost on it? Yeah, I think they're not. Yeah, okay. I think they only want the fuel requirements for all the modules for Spectrum when also taking account for the mass added fuel. But are they only asking to have it without the fuel count in there? Because the examples... No, the examples also gave it, and its fuel is blah, blah, blah. Because that, yeah, they're telling me that the result is this, but the example, let's just try it. It's cheap to try. Let's recompile, and let's try this one. Let's see what I get instead. Yeah, that's not the right answer either. All right. Because I guessed incorrectly, I have to take a five minutes break. All right, I'll take a five minute break and see what is wrong in there. I'm also going to take a break because the examples that I get seem to work, but the big one does not, which happens quite a few times to me, or it happened a few times to me in the past. And there are no great results of that. Okay, so I do get still the string inputs. I do get the fuel result in that one. I know this is not great for everyone watching because right now I'm in 23 minutes. Uh, there is no challenge in how to do it in Erlang at this point. But yeah, you still get to see me go through that. The first 90% is easy, the second 90% is a bit harder to do. So I got the sum of all the fuel for all the inputs I have. All right, all right, all right. The iteration should be fine. Let's try the other one. So, 1969, which is the year of the moon lightning. Quite a fun, 966. That should be good. God damn it. So if I just try 14, I should be getting just two. All right. So have I broken the first one by accident? No, I still had the right result for the first one, which was this. All right, so it is interesting. My program still looks all right. I'm going to take a quick break. Is this the same result I had? Yes. And see, the final result is fine. The thing is fine in here. Uh, what was I getting? Okay, I guessed this. So it hasn't seen my guess as different than it was. So I'm guessing that maybe ooh, it was actually the shorter thing 
and I was too quick to do it and then it complains that the result is not right. So the thing I'm going to do now is revert to this result, see if it's fine and enter it. I'm going to pause my recording for a few minutes um, and then we can see if it works. All right, so for you it's going to be no break, but for me it's going to be a little break. All right, so I'm back and I, I'm going to try this, but in the five minutes break I took, I realized uh, a thing that I did that was probably a problem and I'm pretty sure that this explains why I failed on it. And this is one of the things I do best to solve problems, which is walk away and do something else and eventually you realize that you were doing it wrong. And so I've got five minutes to solve the other version of the thing. And uh, it's pretty straightforward when you think of it. The problem is thinking of it in the first place. So the thing that I did as a mistake is assume that uh, because um, all the fuel costs are integers that the cost of each of them would translate to be the same whether like you know if I have two 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 or something like that that counting the fuel cost for this would be the same as counting the cost for six but it's not the same because of this function here that is not super accurate and because we don't have that uh, you know absolute good precision in how we do it and we kind of give up when a number is below zero then those two things are not equivalent so the thing that we have to count for the fuel of the fuel uh, should be the fuel costs of the fuel itself and so this changes the format a little bit because currently if I want this to look fine I need to have the actually just flip the new cost and it's going to be n plus the value of the new cost. And so when doing that, I should be getting equivalent results of these and uh, something that's a bit clearer. Yeah, new cost, what fuel one isn't defined, what is going, oh yeah, full stop. This is a good thing. So let's recompile see what we get that would be an entirely different result but let's play with the little test functions that I had here and so was that in oh that won't be changing but yeah the total sum of all of them should be a bit different uh, while we do have the little five minutes to wait there I'm going to do something which is dig into efficiency a little bit because now I have everything in nearly one pass. I'm not going to clean up the input because I want to keep it entirely separate there. But the fuel cost right now is done with a body recursive function, which means that if I had a list of a billion numbers, it would take a lot of um, stack space to be able to store it. And so to be able to lower that, let's make a fuel cost function that takes a single integer. And we're going to prime it with a zero value, and this is going to be its accumulator. And so when n is greater than zero, we still do the fuel cost for the new thing. Uh, but instead of calling it that way, it's now the accumulator plus n. And for that one, instead of returning zero, we just return the accumulator itself. All right. And those should technically be equivalent. It's um, yeah, that's the same value, and if I run for the entire thing itself, I do get the same result here, which hopefully this time is going to be correct. Now, the little problem I have is, yeah, I'm still 3 minutes 45 into my new recording after the pause. I don't have the right to enter my new value just yet, so I'm going to put you on pause again, and we're going to be just back. Let me copy that, and then the only thing I have to do once the time is ready is press submit. All right, let's see if this works. Oh, I got it working. All right, finally. And so let's get to the intro. Uh, hopefully this was any kind of interesting. We're probably going to get into more fun Erlang stuff and how do we translate that stuff otherwise in the next few days. Um, next day is day two, but that is still today for me because this is December 2. I just have 
that tracking on this stuff. So see you next time and hopefully you kind of enjoyed that.